Welcome everybody to another Thursday vlog, Jonesik here. Today's topic are the top 10 things I worry about traveling currently. So one of my biggest concerns right now is probably going to go through security. Security checks are going to be very difficult. Uh, it's going to be probably twice as long uh, with them doing temperature checks and even some countries are requiring you to take an actual uh, COVID-19 test. Of course, every country is going to have their different kinds of screening techniques and whatnot, so it definitely could hold you up. Instead of like getting to the airport you know, two hours in advance, you might have to do it three hours in advance. So the process might be more lengthy, they might be a little bit more thorough. Uh, and that's going to add on time, of course. So another concern of mine is always keeping an eye on every country's ever-changing regulations. As every country is going through different phases at different times, it's going to be one of those things to keep an eye on. Which countries are probably easier to get to, and if you are going to that country, what are they expecting out of people who are actually visiting and actually being tourists? So a lot of airports and also a lot of airlines are actually requiring people to wear masks. Now, I don't mind wearing a mask at all, but can you imagine uh, having to wear a mask for, say, 12, 14 hours? You're going to need to make sure that you're comfortable. So when you're going out there, make sure that you have a mask that's comfortable. Multiple masks, disposable and washable masks will always be one of those things. So always keep an eye on like your supply for that kind of stuff. Also, we already know that air, uh, airplanes can actually be quite dry at times. So make sure you keep yourself hydrated and all that stuff. But still the concern there to be wearing a mask the entire time. Most uh, frontline workers obviously already know what it's like to have a little bit of a bridge on the nose and especially if you're going to be going around town or wherever getting that weird tan. It's, it's bad enough that we get the raccoon eyes from like sunglasses but now we're going to have that face tan if they actually require us to keep wearing masks throughout. There's also that concern about being in a small place with a group of people for a long amount of time. So the chances of maybe catching something are slightly higher than if you were just walking around outside in your city or in any other city. So another big concern of mine, of course, is what's on a lot of people's minds. That when you get to that country, uh, requiring to stay, you know, 14 days quarantine for yourself. Um, that's going to be probably really difficult. Most people can only spend about two weeks, which is the 14 days, just to go on vacation, let alone quarantine, and then be able to go outside and venture and do all that kind of stuff. And with that, it's also uh, having a self quarantine when you come back. Depending on which countries you travel to, my country is going to probably require people to quarantine for at least 14 days when they get back. So that's literally 28 days of possible quarantine without even stepping out of wherever you are just to go on vacation, see the sites, and to do and experience the culture there. So another big growing concern of mine is actually getting sick overseas. Getting sick overseas, um, it's one of those things where to see if your insurance will cover it, uh, to make sure that everything is going to be set in place for you to be taken care of. Um, depending on which country you're going to, to see if their healthcare system is actually equipped to handle this kind of thing, and if they have a rise or not, if they have a spike here or there. It'll always be one of those concerns that other people are going to be having. Um, not to mention like, you know, being stuck on a cruise ship and getting sick or being stuck in a hotel room and wanting to get home and staying longer than you need to. It's one of those things where people worry about their finances or if things are going to be taken care of back home. So another big concern of mine is actually being greeted by the locals. Now, that's really one of my favorite things of all is actually meeting the locals, hearing about all their experiences, uh, seeing through their eyes what their culture is like and what their city is like or their country is like. But it's one of those things where I understand the fear. Uh, there's always going to be fear having people come in from outside, especially if um, you've been able to flatten the curve where you are and I'm coming from a big city and all that kind of stuff. So there is that growing concern. And another concern of mine is actually accommodations. Now, I don't think hostels are going to be a wise place to be staying at. Uh, Airbnbs, um, probably be a little bit safer but then again I'm not sure what regulations there will be for Airbnb now. People will also be worried about cleanliness or how many people have stayed there. With more people coming in and out of certain places it's hard to keep an eye or keep track of, of how things are clean and how often they're clean. That also goes for hotels. But hotels have a more regulatory thing where they actually have a housekeeper running through on a daily basis and they can actually take care of that stuff a lot more. So for me I think that at this moment when we travel, we're going to probably be staying in more hotels than Airbnbs and definitely won't be staying in hostels at this time. And again, that's just my opinion. And last but not least, 
probably the biggest thing after all of those hurdles that you've had to jump through, say you pass every one of those things that I've mentioned and you're actually made it out there safe, it's going to be what things or places are going to be restricted. Since large gatherings are uh, definitely not going to be a big thing, um, depending on if you're going to be able to go to a museum or if you're going to go be able to see certain statues or monuments or if you're going to be able to go to certain shops or restaurants you know that, that you're actually looking forward to go to it's going to be one of those things where it changes quite a lot uh trying to see the eiffel tower it might be a much longer wait um i think presently the louvre is like closed at the moment not to mention like other places like say the Charles Bridge will be limited because they'll, they'll want like social distancing and all that kind of stuff. So places like the Taj Mahal or maybe even seeing that one temple in Thailand may need an actual reservation of some sort. Of course the wait times are going to be a little bit longer because a lot of people don't want to see that kind of stuff. But it's always one of those things where that's going to probably be the new normal until all this stuff kind of finally blows over. On the plus side, though, like going to see those monuments, if you're able to, probably will be less crowded, and you'll probably be able to get those better shots, those better photos, those better selfies for your Instagram, Facebook, or whatnot. So I know on this channel, and especially for myself, travel is a big part. Um, right now, uh, we're not going overseas, which is just fine because we can still see our own country. Uh, between provinces, we're still allowed to fly back and forth. Hopefully flights will be a little bit cheaper than usual because that'll help out a lot. That'll entice a little bit more people. But why not inject more money into your own economy? Go to places in your country or where you're from uh, to see new things. I recently took a trip to Jasper and a lot of the trails weren't 100% uh, open. Most of them were. And we were actually lucky enough to see a lot of wildlife. Actually quite a ton of wildlife. And I don't think they're quite used to having a lot of people there. It's kind of nice. Also, the small town of Jasper didn't have a lot of people in it, so it, it was so weird not seeing like so many tourists from around the world to come see the mountains and to come see the, the forest and stuff like that. But yeah, it was nice. There were quite a lot of times where during our hike we didn't see people for hours and it was uh, good to be in a nice peace and quiet, especially with the people that a person that I care for. So, you know, the wife and I had a great time with that. And that wraps up the video. If you guys have any suggestions, of course, if there's anything I missed, yeah, let me know, of course. And do me a favor, since you guys are here, and if you guys have made it this far, subscribe. Why not? You know, there's a lot more content, a lot more content on the way, of course. Uh, if you like this kind of video, obviously you know what to do. Leave yourself a like over there. And of course, if you need tips, tricks, or any ideas of what I should do for the next video, or what you thought of this video, of course, leave a comment down below. Um, speaking of content, uh, I have a lot more content either already recorded and mostly on the way. But if you can't wait for the next video, whether it be a Tuesday Trek Tuesday or a Thursday regular vlog or a Saturday travel vlog because I'm still doing those still, um, there's going to be more content probably here or here or wherever else may be on the screen. It's probably been there for a bit already. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Bye.